All right, sitting back down for what's going to be episode four now of Darkness Within. Uh, thank you very much for your comments on the last episode to help point me in the right direction. I especially liked Alex's suggestion that the first thing I should do is drink a gallon of water, because after three days of sleeping, I am about to die of thirst. There we go. Just, <laughs> just drink out of the toilet. We're all good. Next up, Safinda's suggestion is that I should go back to Ivar Bergen's cabin a third time, which I probably would have done anyways, because uh, so much crazy shit has happened there. I am interested to know what I missed. I hope that no one is here this time. So yeah, last two times we came here, uh, shit got pretty crazy. I, I also have to address, I know I put up editor notes for it, but uh, I totally fucking forgot about... Where is it? There was a note. A note that we found in our home. Do I not have it anymore? Maybe at some point we got rid of it, but it, w it was a letter that said to us, meet tonight at the cabin at midnight, or whatever. And uh, it also just said, like, uh, it was from a guy named Gerard. So basically, it was a letter inviting us to that meeting last night. And uh, I wish I knew about that, because it would have answered a lot of things. So yeah, that's totally my fault for just being forgetful. So we'll go ahead and sweep the house now and see if anything has changed. Gosh, I have to up my brightness. It's such a dark game. A metal pot. Can I pour thinner into it? I can! Whoa! Okay, already we're doing something that I didn't know about. Do I then put the paintbrush in the thinner? I do. I've cleaned the paintbrush with the thinner. So now we just have our regular old paintbrush. Not entirely sure what we're going to do with that. Alright, well, we saw that the, the crazy shit was going on upstairs last night. So that's where we'll be going. It's probably in the attic, but I don't know for sure. Curious, how many things can I open with that ring of keys that who I believe was Gerard gave me? Key ring with two keys. Okay, so. Did that work? Okay, so that's something. Uh, the key ring that he gave me unlocks that. And that instantly gives us another key. Uh, it doesn't seem like we know what it's for. Gosh, all the keys in this game look so ugly and old and crusty. Here's a, some letter here. I've begun to examine the special wooden sculptures that Mr. Kerwin obtained from Africa. These identical wooden sculptures have a hidden compartment in them, which is protected by some kind of locking mechanism that I haven't yet been able to figure out, apart from one that I opened easily. I don't know what these are meant to contain. I've also seen firsthand one of these sculptures in one of the places that we discovered with the aid of the maps. These sculptures are extremely important. Inside the one that I opened, I found various kinds of leaves and an eyeless dead insect, which I couldn't identify. Having no eyes, it made me think that it is a species of insect that lives its entire life in dark and deep caves where no sunlight ever penetrates. I haven't figured out which plant or tree the leaves come from. The smell is strong and very interesting. Since the same smell emanates from the other sculptures, which I couldn't yet open, I assume that all of them contain the same items Mr. Kerwin says but the purpose of these sculptures is to contain the Diversahi mixture. All of my research concerning the Diversahi mixture has not yielded satisfying results. This indicates that its preparation has been protected extremely well, or that knowledge of it has been passed through oral traditions. In even the most ancient and comprehensive writings, hardly any information can be found about it. According to these writings, the mixture has a very potent effect on people. It's known that the mixture can induce altered states of consciousness. I believe it has additional effects, because Versahi is of critical importance to the Soul Metamorphosis Doctrine. At the moment, I'm working on opening the locks of the sculptures without damaging them in any way. To do this, I'll need to understand the locking mechanisms. I believe I'll figure this out soon. Ivar Bergman. So, I should, I should scan that. We can infer from this that that one sculpture that was already opened that we found in Clark Field's study, that was probably something 
that's probably where the Harmal slash Dervasahi came from that was then unleashed in the basement. How about Soul Metamorphosis Doctrine? How about the auto scan again? Nothing again. As much as I do enjoy this game, the document scan has gotten old to me now because because of moments like this where I find a document that I personally think has a lot of interesting stuff in it and the game basically just says, no, that's not important actually. You don't have to worry about that. So I think it I think it's an interesting mechanic that could have been executed better. Here's a, another letter. Using the marker in the old maps is a great way to find the places in quotation marks, but the condition of the maps is deteriorating rapidly. To avoid any further damage to them, the maps have been placed in a special cabinet for storage. We have discovered a lot of places by using them, and our research continues. The most important place we have found is the ancient cemetery that hides the tombs we have long sought after. Hell yes. Ancient cemetery? The ruins that were found 350 to 400 meters from there lead me to believe that there is a, that, that this place was an ancient settlement. Perhaps the ruins were once a town that belonged to the folk called Yathers that lived on Northwood Mountain long ago. Mr. Kerwin will start searching this place within a few days. Any clues here? I want to go to this place so bad. I want to come to the ancient cemetery where all the spooky shit happens. But the game says I'm not ready to yet. A half-full ink well. And a little feather pen. It is unlikely, but I suppose it's possible that, um... One of the keys that we found could actually open... One of the locked rooms well the way back at Clark Field's house. Nonetheless, I'll continue to have a look around here. Gosh, I... I am very paranoid now that I know that this game likes to pull the trick where, uh... A person just approaches you out of the blue when you're not expecting it. I hated that. All right. There were locked doors down below, so I guess that's where I'm going. I'm happy to have leads. I just don't like being down in the tunnels. A hint is available. I say, that is the first time this entire game that I've had the option for a hint. No, I don't think I will use it. At least not yet. Can I open this without either of my keys? The key we found upstairs opens it. Oh shit. This is a ton of maps. There are a lot of maps here. Each of them marked with a series of numbers. I think that's a kind of serial number. Okay. I have no clue which one I should look at. There are just too many of them. Maps clue has now been marked. Okay, so some slight bad news. Um, I actually turned off my mic after I looked at that little thing with the map in it, and I didn't realize for about 10 minutes. So I did find some things while my mic was off, so I'm going to walk you through them again. A lot of it was mainly just reading a letter that I found. Uh, so we opened this up, and there's a lot of maps in here. They're all marked with a different series of numbers. And I'm assuming that we're going to need to figure out which map to use, and then pop it on this thing, and that will take us to the location of the ancient cemetery slash ruins that we keep hearing about. So, uh, on my way to this, refill the save point, I actually did something that I tried, that I... Didn't know if it would work or not, but it did, and it really surprised me. <laughs> and I'll play that right here. I wonder, can I actually dip the paintbrush in this? I can. Okay, hold up. Okay, so that's something I, I didn't do before. Shit. Shit, this is gonna be weird to edit. So yes, apparently you can put ink on this paintbrush, and the reason I was thinking of that is because I was just looking at this cabinet here. You can actually open this cabinet before I couldn't, or I didn't realize I could. And you can take a look at all these different little weird shrunken head things. And one of them, I think it's top top right must be, is different from the others. It's like a throne. And if you turn it around, it's got a bunch of symbols on it. Some of them are defaced. The one on the top left resembles a spiral. And 
what I'm going to try now is can I can I brush it with ink? No. This won't work. I guess I can't. Um Oh well. <laughs> that was that was all I had. Anyhow, uh down the hall there are some things that we did not see on our previous visit. Some of them are uh, a little alarming. All right, so we'll do the prison room next, but first, there's a room over here that we completely did not know about. First, we have this crate right here. I'll give you I'll give you three guesses as to what's inside this box because it's uh it's, it's something you would not expect in this game. Here we are. Rifles. Old hunting rifles of some kind. They don't even look that old. But there, there's just a bunch of rifles. There's like a small militia being gathered here, apparently, because they are stocking up weapons of some kind. And then we have a an electric fence. Can I actually try to touch this before the... There's probably a current running through the fence. It's dangerous to touch it, okay. Uh, I didn't draw that before. I assumed I would just get zapped. Turn off the fence. And now we'll have a look at this. The other box. What are they keeping behind an electric fence? There is only straw here. But the fence door can be electrically charged. It's obvious that something very important or dangerous was kept here. A crate with straw on the bottom of it? I mean, I don't think I see air holes, but they're definitely keeping an animal in there. And that kind of freaks me out. I have no idea what these goobers have use of with a freaking animal. Maybe it's just like a sacrificial goat or something, but that's still freaky, though. I don't know what that's going to be about. And then finally, the last great revelation. We pick up this candle here, and with a candle now, we can go into this room, which was previously too dark. And here we find... A jacket. There are some papers here. The handwriting. These are Mr. Field's notes. So this must be his jacket. All right. So, big deal. This is pages four out of four for his diary. We now know the clerk field was being held in custody by the cult members in this chamber. And we have the last of his notes here. So I will now give these a read. July 29th, 2011. Lately, I have noticed some great changes in the behavior and appearance of Ivar. He looks paler, speaks less, and this is getting incredibly worse. I first noticed these changes two weeks ago when he knocked at my door on a stormy night. He was all wet, but seemed unaware of this. When I invited him to come in, he hesitated at first, but then quickly came in. His hands were shaking so much that I thought that he had had a nervous breakdown. During the night, he didn't speak often, and when he did, it seemed like he talked under compulsion. His eyes were bloodshot, and he was sweating profusely. I asked him to stay in my house, using the storm as an excuse, and he accepted without hesitation. When he previously came to visit me, three nights before, he seemed normal, but I could see quite clearly that he wasn't listening to me, and he trembled whenever there were any loud noises caused by the storm. These tremblings did not seem to be caused by random, but more like the extreme uneasiness of a person constantly under threat. Whenever there were noises, it was very noticeable how his mood changed, and fear enveloped him, and he would look around desperately. When I asked him if he had had a problem, he said that there was nothing wrong, just tiredness, but it wasn't hard to see that he was on the brink of a breakdown. I haven't heard from him since that night. And then there's one last entry here, August 23rd, 2011. I want to talk about the first entry in a second, but I'll read this one first. I don't know how to describe this, but lately some strange incidents have occurred which have made me look at myself suspiciously. Recently, at night, I have been hearing some unidentified hoarse screams, conversations, laughing and gnawing sounds which I guess have been coming from the depths of that damn well under the house. At first, most of these sounds were not clear enough to be distinguishable, and I thought that there were some animals, maybe rats, in the well. They might have gotten in through openings in the well, and this would explain those gnawing sounds, I thought that there were rats in the well. Aren't rats found in places like that? Lately, I hear these sounds more clearly, leaving me no doubt that some of them are human voices. I hear conversations, indescribably disgusting, malicious laughter, as if coming from the center of the earth, and many more sounds I cannot name that wake me up at night. Horse gnawing sounds that are coming from far away are also becoming clearer. 
They are like thousands of disgusting, simultaneous gnawing sounds from the depths. He's really going in on the gnawing sounds this time. And they are getting increasingly closer to the surface. I sometimes find myself waiting silently, hardly breathing in the dead of the night, while trying to listen to the soft running noises or voices speaking. In addition to this, I feel the house itself is trembling more noticeably than it used to, and I hear the wooden planks creaking as a result of these tremors. If I hadn't heard all those damn noises, the speaking, laughter, and gnawing sounds, I might have thought that small earthquakes were causing those tremors, because Wellsmith is in the highest level quake zone. But I am not even sure anymore as to whether the earthquakes of Wellsmith are natural. Who knows what lies below? The depths of the earth, which shudders with uneasiness. So, we're going to talk about this first reading here. It sounds like something happened to Ivar Bergman, whatever his name is. He's, he sees this is written on July 29th, and it says, When he previously came to visit me three nights before, he seemed normal. Something happened to Ivar Bergman between July 26th and July 29th. And we're going to keep an eye out for any dates that take place between those to try to figure out what happened to him. I don't know if his body was, like, completely replaced or if, like, he witnessed some crazy Cthulhu shit or what happened, but something changed the dude. And the dude was already weird. He, he had this underneath his cabin, so he was well advised of all these things. And then, very well hidden, but myself span clipping was able to find it, you can search the jacket a second time. There's a key in the pocket of this coat. Now, we will be looking into this key now, but I can say with pretty good confidence that the game intentionally made it so you find this separately, because this key will actually unlock a secret. Alright, check it out. It was this door here. This door is not locked. I think there's something behind it that blocks it. Ever since he said that, I was suspicious of this door. And judging by general architecture, one can surmise that the same room can be accessed on this side. And this is the key that opens that door. You have found a secret. And this is the exact moment that I realized my mic was off. So now we are all caught up and we're playing blind together again. That's a lie. I first noticed that there were candles on the floor and some kind of ritual thing happened here. So, um, a glass object. That is a bong, but you wouldn't know anything about that, Howard Lorraine. What is this place? Whoa. There's a curtained wall. What gives? Oh, now I'm standing in the middle of one of those. I don't like that. Hey, I recognize this little bugger from my Arkham Horror game. That's like a an iconic Cthulhu symbol or something. I forget what it means. Strange drawings and writings are unreadable. These drawings are strange. That one looks like it says Mondragora. Simple anatomical drawings. How come these are simple anatomical drawings, but the other one was just strange, un uncomprehensible shit? That is a little weird. These drawings look frightening. I just saw that guy. I was just looking down here. Shit. Crocodile head man. It's not a Lovecraftian story without a bunch of weird found sketches. Now we can look at the thing on the floor. Finally. I was wondering when he would address this. Actually, we can't do anything with it. Unless... No. Okay, we don't actually have the uh, candle anymore. I was going to say we could just like complete the ritual and throw a candle down on it. Well, color me a little underwhelmed. I was hoping for some... Oh, wait, hold up. I can go over here. So this is the thing that blocks the door near the living room. These look like letters... What? Oh. <laughs> I misinterpreted it. These signs look like letters to me. Uh, if so, I have never seen such an alphabet. I thought he was saying that they were like written letters to him. Buddy. You gotta behave. 
Alchemical objects, ancient books. Don't make me bust out HP Lovecraft again, Mr. Fluffers. Chain? A very strong-looking rusty chain. What am I going to do with that? Paint it black? Wait, 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 what was that? He said something. This is some kind of dust in the pot, which resembles a big urn. I do not want to predict what is inside. Ghouls again. Three weeks after the previous attempt at the city cemetery, last night a new digger was stopped again by the cemetery watchman, Gregor Thomas. Watchman Thomas thinks that this was the same man from the former incident. This time he was more cautious, trying to dig with the aid of a single candle in the dead of the night. Had it not been for the barking of Gregor's dog, Buck, he would have never noticed his presence. Police have started an investigation. Grave robbers, huh? What's this? Cigar box? Oh, big letter. Hold up. It's written to someone named Mr. Asimov. There's a couple of letters in here. We'll start with Mr. Asimov. Mr. Asimov, I don't have very much information regarding the history of this house. Most of the information I have comes from some letters I found hidden in a secret compartment. I believe that they were written by one of the previous owners. The strange thing about these letters is that they were never sent to anyone, just kept in a secret place. Maybe they were only meant to be delivered under certain circumstances. I want to relate to you something that I discovered with the help of these letters. If you look down at the garden from the upper story windows, you can see that the low stone platforms and footpaths form a geometric pattern. This would be overlooked by the casual observer, and would only be apparent to someone possessing esoteric knowledge like ourselves. The low circular stone platforms are placed at each are placed at each corner of the rectangular garden wall. The structures that connect these platforms to the house pass through the tall neglected grasses, looking like narrow stone footpaths when viewed at a ground level. I was upset that it took me this much time to notice the shape, and only after I saw it did and only after I saw it did I realize why the garden walls were thicker than normal, and their height so colossal. According to my research regarding the house, it was built in 1786 on the site of a strange pillared stone building that resembled Roman architecture. This strange building was not a welcome sight for the local people, and they claimed that it befouled the surroundings. According to some written accounts, this ancient building was demolished, and the foundations of the house were completed in secrecy during the night. There is no indication of who built the house or who lived there at the time. In 1895, it was bought by a German immigrant. In the winter of 1896, he attempted to add new sections to the house and restore the older parts of it. You guys can at least watch and take a bath while I read. He attempted to add new sections to the house and restore the older parts of it, but the attempted renovations were not completed because of his abrupt departure from the house. After this, the house remained empty for some time. That is all that I could learn about it. There are some rumors about this house. I want to mention some of them. According to one rumor, even though only people, only one person lived in the house, some people claimed that they heard talking and the footsteps of more than one person. Others claimed that they saw fires burning, accompanied by the sound of disgusting hymns. This rumor is fairly widespread. Another rumor is about huge moths which have been seen outside the house during the summer solstice. There are other rumors about huge creatures resembling gigantic moths that abduct newborn babies from their houses. Folk tales have always interested me, and I would be lying if I said that I am not afraid of the possible truth of these rumors. In my opinion, the most interesting rumor is the one stating that this house has always been owned by someone. It has always been occupied and has never been empty. No one speaks openly about this rumor. It is obvious that this topic makes people feel very afraid. Since there are things that I cannot tell you in this letter, it would be much better for us to meet and talk face to face. I am the subsequent owner after that German immigrant, and I intend to continue the restoration process which he left unfinished. I plan to complete the renovation process in a few months, keeping true to the original design of the house. You know only too well why these types of places were built and why they must stand strong and firm to withstand the vicissitudes of time. Until we meet again, J.O. J.O. Do we... 
Do we know that name? This guy, I'm guessing, is who owned the house before Clark did. Seems like it's a typewriter. We'll give this the, the magnifying glass, because I don't think we're going to find anything in here if this is a secret optional room anyhow. Yeah, there's nothing in here of explicit importance. But that is very interesting. And then we have another newspaper clipping. Disgusting discovery. Last night, in the oldest settlement of Northwood, a disgusting discovery was made in the backyard of a house at 15 Wind Street by Officer E. Forge of the Wellsmith Police Department. After the discovery, Officer Forge told the press that he had heard a dim but sharp cry and a noise coming from the backyard of the house. It sounded like a man falling to the ground. When the officer approached the backyard, he noticed numerous strange little mounds of earth. There was no one around, but some areas of the soil looked like they had been dug very recently. When Officer Forge dug up one of the mounds with his bare hands, he was totally shocked to find a lot of small mammal carcasses and a human corpse which had recently been exhumed from the hill burial ground. The house was believed to be empty, but preliminary investigations proved to the contrary. In some rooms, a number of medical instruments were found. Police closed off the area for further investigation. Is this, this is this house they're talking about, I assume? No. You're too good to drink Labatt Blue, Mr. Fluffers. It's, it's really bad. It's like bread soda. What did I say? These Lichthios... God. Chill. Chill out. I'm just gonna dump this. This is, this is like the most underwhelming beer I've ever had. I'd sooner have another Amber Hellraiser before I drink that. These Lekithos... Le what are Lekithos? These Lekithos-like ceramics have metallic covers. Okay, I don't know what that means. Materia? As far as I know, Materia means material in Latin. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the Prima Materia from Black Ops 4 Zombies. The dollar store version of Element 115. Well, I can definitely see that that room was a secret in the sense that it was optional. And I struggle to really gather what I've gained from it. That's okay. We'll go back to Ivar's cabin now and just not think about it because I'm just generally terrified of this place. Um, we found stuff that belonged to the previous owner of the house that corroborated the idea that someone has always lived there. And it looks like Clark Field was doing alchemical shit. Now let's check this out. There was a blank piece of paper here. Maybe I can brush the ink on this. No. This won't work. You know what? I'm gonna doubt the game for a second and, th and say that this the reason the game is trying to push these hints on me is because they know that whatever I have to do is very narrow. So let's try a hint as proctored by the game itself. Search the cabin's interior. There may be some other documents slash letters to give you information on what to do next. Okay, well that's not too much of a hint. All right, we may have a very, very tiny clue that could be important. Uh, and that is that there is a symbol on the wall in the basement that we can click on for a clue. Yeah, that thing. Some kind of symbol. Apparently it depicts an eye. Hmm. Where have I seen this before? The eye symbol. You saw it in your own hallucinations, didn't you? Can I combine clues with that? Whoa. Okay. Item that we missed. This is almost definitely what we need. It's in the uh, room with the electrified gate. I looked through this twice. There's apparently some putty in here that I need? Somewhere in this room? Where is this stuff? Inspect the panel? Like this thing? Are you serious? Look, here's the hitbox. Here's the obvious hitbox you're supposed to interact with. And then look at this right here. There is some putty here. It may be useful. That is like... 
that might be the most ridiculous, like the genuinely most ridiculous hidden object in a hidden object game I have ever seen. They are now ex expecting me to look at the cock on windowsills. That should not even count as a spoiler, come on. That was impossible to find. How would anyone know to look for that? Now I'm just like seething, but come on. <laughs> what an impossible task. So I'm going to pop it into the back of this, aren't I? Taking a cast of the putty. Now I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint ink on it, I bet. I've painted the putty with the brush, and now we're going to roll it onto the blank piece of paper upstairs, and it's going to give us a clear transcription of what those symbols are. And those symbols will somehow correspond to which map we need, I hope. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Maybe these will be the symbols we finally use that are in Clark Field's desk. This should work. The paper that I marked using the putty. Spiral, weird ass eye thing, and balance scales from Wizard 101. Let's see if those symbols appear on the thing in Clark Fields or in a uh, Loth Nolder's office. No. Wait. That one does look familiar. This is the weird eye-like symbol I saw in the galleries of Ivar's cabin, and WMT is written in front of it. Can this stand for Wells Myth? Holy shit, wait, I just... So this could be the map number. I better check it out. Oh, I didn't... You guys saw that! I didn't even... I did not even click the magnifying glass. Oh, I f I'm so happy with myself. I just... I just did some detective shit right there. Can I look at the other ones that all say WMT? This symbol also has the WMT abbreviation in front of it. It is more than likely that this symbol belongs to Wellsmith 2. I wonder what it stands for. Symbol 1? And then is there symbol 2? Come on, I guess I have to do one at a time. Also has WMT. It is more than likely that this symbol belongs to Wellsmith 2. Symbol 2? Okay, and there's a fourth one. Okay, so symbol 3, the I one. F00548. That's the one that was actually on the statue. All right. Now, just for the sake of thoroughness, I am going to hit the magnifying glass to see if there's anything we missed. Seems to be a list of symbols. The numbers look like the map IDs I saw in the cabinet's gallery. Okay, well... Look at that. We have a lead now. We have a lead that has now prompted new music to play. Is there some kind of label on here that I can't see? Here's the map with the ID... Uh, something something 0548. Wait, can I just take any map? I guess I took the important one. Let's put it into place. What did the what were the exact numbers on Ivar's desk again? It was three hundred, three hundred fifty, I think. Which I'm assuming is X coordinate and then Y coordinate. Wait, was I able to walk over here before? I never opened this desk. I thought that this one could not be interacted with. Another map. Oh shit, okay, things just changed. A lot of things just changed. There's a bunch of letters in here? That's a lot of letters. Oh, man. Oh, shit. This is going to be a lot of reading. Okay. Some kind of correspondence was going on here. I am going to go eat my dinner, and then we will have a closer look at this. All right. The investigation continues. Uh, we will begin by looking over these letters. Dear I.B., I will try to write down completely all the information regarding the strange disappearance of Mr. R, which I have learned directly from Mr. F.V. Man, these guys love their initials. I beseech you to send this mail to Mr. Kerwin, too, because, as you know, I have to leave for 
Tsalale today. I have not heard that name before. About one month ago, Mr. R had written a letter to Mr. F.V., mentioning a police operation was being conducted in the area which he was living in, and how he felt uncomfortable because of this event. According to what Mr. R said, police heard some unusual things, and because of this, they started their investigation in the suburbs. Some people have been arrested, but the reason for these arrests has not been announced publicly. In the successive days, Mr. F got in touch with, what, with one of our police friends and got some information regarding the strange operations. According to our police connection, the investigation focused on two Gabonese sailors and what they had brought from some eastern Indian islands. Mr. Mr. R tried to retrieve information regarding these Gabonese sailors. These sailors gave some objects from some eastern Indian islands where they often sailed with merchant ships to some unknown persons in the suburbs. At a tavern called Knight's Head, he learned from an undependable source, from a drunk, the police seized one of those objects in the course of the investigation. According to the drunk, they had sold a very ancient parchment to someone named Le Gros, and were paid very generously. Then these two had quit sailing and went back to their country, Gabon. That last object, the parchment, was very important and dangerous. Mr. R said all of this in his last letter to Mr. F. V. But after a month, when Mr. F. V. noticed that no replies to his letters had been coming from Mr. R, he wanted to visit him personally. When he arrived at his house, there was no trace of Mr. R. That is all that Mr. F. V. told me. He is now residing at Mr. R.'s place and waiting for more further orders. I have sent a letter to Mr. F.V. telling him to contact you, and I hope that he will visit you soon. Your servant, Z, or Zai. Hmm. So, let me take a look at this real quick. I.B. is definitely Ivar Bergman, or whatever his name is. I, I keep confusing him for other names, I think. Uh, I don't think we know anyone whose name begins with R. I definitely don't know who F.V. is, but it's probably a two-parter last name. Next letter. Gosh, there's so many letters. My old friend, you may be worried because you haven't heard from me for some time, but I can assure you that you will be surprised when you see the things that I have found. In the packages that I have sent you, I have added all of the copies of my discoveries together, with the notes about what I have written. It is very noticeable that they are very ancient, but still, I think that they were copied from an even more ancient source. The drawings on the fourth parchment seem particularly attractive and confusing. They may have some they may seem meaningless at first, but when you inspect the notes that I have added, they will be clearer. I think that the sign with an Ouroboros around it serves as a key or source for the others, and I still cannot understand the meaning of the diagram on which the familiar celestial bodies are shown in strange locations. If you could find any clues about these matters, please let me know. Even if I wanted to talk about these things excessively, I have to stop here for now. I have to travel shortly, and I won't return for one month, hence you will not be hearing from me during that time. I think that I will be back at the latest, on the 28th of November, 2011. The time is getting closer, and thus, these things still start to get become more complex. P.S. I think that there is a connection between my discoveries and the book you have sent, but it would be best to leave this until our next conversation, since I have not been able to examine it sufficiently. John D. Huh. That date has me wondering, what is present day? I Are we, are we past the 28th of November? Because it sounds like they're getting closer to something that is probably going to happen soon. Hit the magnifying glass again. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to keep hitting the magnifying glass because it looks like they have a lot of documents this far in the game that they just haven't put any... Oh, wait, there is this thing. Someone's date of return. But who will return where? Well, yeah, but is he even going to make a clue out of that? He doesn't even make a clue of it, but he does remark. That just seems like an error. Next letter. Hi, friend. I want to proudly announce to you that we have discovered what we have been seeking. The city was lying buried in the sand one mile northwest of the location we last dug at. According to some local legends, all of the inhabitants of the city were killed when the city was buried under the sands because of their sins. 
These legends have greatly influenced the locals, as we noticed when we excavated the city. We uncovered it after two weeks of exhausting work. The first things that we noticed were the skeletons and abundance of bones scattered everywhere, some of which appeared to have been gnawed on. We found parchments which contained pictures and some strange hieroglyphs in a cave that was most likely used as a library. The sections with pictures look like they are about necromancy and sorcery. One parchment in particular is very exciting because it has some sections that look like the Voynich Manuscript, which is the thought to be related to the Botanic. In some buildings, stained low altars which have really exciting symbols on them greet the eye. Inside the buildings with these low altars, it is apparent that at one time, the walls were adorned with colorful petroglyphs. This desert is not as auspicious as it first seemed. I listened to the sounds which Marco Polo had mentioned, and I can say that he was right. Some nights, speech and music were heard so close to our camp that it would be fatuity not to try to record them. But it cannot be said that we were successful in that attempt, because the only thing we had were the screams of the wind that was continuously moving the sands and immersing us in incoherent thoughts. I think that this discovery is an important step on the way to our ultimate goal, which needs to be examined a bit more. I hope I can send detailed documents about all of our discoveries in a short time. Take care till then. Shalif bin Humar. Can I just say, like, I know that I, I say all the time when I play horror games that the kind of horror that really gets me the most is a cult horror. I hate just the ideas of, like, there's a bunch of, like, sneaky secret societies of people who are out to get me and, like, I'm in a town full of crazy devil worship and shit. But I quite like the Lovecraftian cults because these guys, look, they call each other friend and they're all working together to, like, resurrect some extinct eldritch god and, like, it just, that, that just sounds like a fun extracurricular. I, I can see myself getting down with a group of people like this who just who just like have have like monthly meetings where they all put on cloaks and talk about like ancient gods and i mean they're not hurting anyone there's i haven't seen any evidence besides the, the crate downstairs that they're doing sacrifices i mean i guess clark field is dead but they they have a good time and like i don't know they probably have like good snacks too at the meetings brother i hope you are all right happily i want to declare to you that the eb problem has been solved EB. The little building in the garden is under our control now, and we've already started to examine it. Since we couldn't take that old fool's house in ordinary ways, we have used the last and the most direct solution. Now JD is residing there. I am sure that you will want to join him in his examination. To communicate with him, please use KD78GT8. We have a cipher breaker of some kind. There is a weird combination here. It seems like an encrypted combination of numbers and letters. Is this an address? An address? I wouldn't have guessed that. And we have found a palanquin there, which contains some objects. We think that these those objects are some kind of keys, but a further investigation is needed. We did not yet try those on the target location, because, as you know, to enter some places without knowledge may be very dangerous. Regards, Ivar Bergman. So he addressed this one to brother. No one else has been using the term brother. It's just, Ivar actually have a brother. And also, EB, I already don't remember, but was that the name of the guy who lived in the Clark Field residence before Clark Field did? Because this is so, it means that Ivar and his gang put that guy out. One last letter. It's a very short one. Honorable IB, as told in the Timbor, or Timibore, I'm not sure, because it might be Latin. Subsequent to a green-colored smoke, a dim flame was seen, but not, but the face, but the mentioned face wasn't. I am not sure that I could read the prayers correctly when the waters have risen, and I am not certain about the part that I believe is to be said when the moon is at the right location. In a short time, I believe that I can report to you the results of my latest research. D.E.G. Well... That was uh, an avalanche of information. And I think the biggest takeaway there, th there was some things like the little code, but above all else, we have learned that this is an operation spanning continents. There was talk of digging in the deserts and men with noticeably Arab names are helping. I may find a use for these sticks. They seem cr specially crafted for a purpose. What are these things? Three sticks? 
Okay, what is the, the weird box here? Yeah, it sounds like they have a dig team in the Middle East or something. And they said that they found a city out there. Okay, this was this whole thing was a complete accidental segue. I just came up here like 20 minutes ago now so that I could have another look at this page. Let's see. Was this the one? No, it's the other page. The ruins that were found 350 to 400 meters from there. Okay, so lead me to believe that this place was an ancient settlement. Using the mark... Okay, I'm going to just give this a silent read and I'll see what I gather from it. Oh, shit. Wait, this is going to be complicated. 350 by 400 meters. Let's assume that's X and Y coordinate. So, are we going to be using... I guess we're going to be using multiples. This, these must be uh, intervals of 300. So that's 350 on the X. And this is 400 on the Y. Will this work? Oh, coordinate. Wait. Oh, okay, I see. You can mark coordinates on here. Coordinates here are 3.05 to buy something. 3.05. Three point oh seven. That sounds like a mistake of the decimal. What if I go up here? Okay, so maybe it is. Maybe it's just a mistake of the decimal. And I do want to mark this place. Three point oh five by four hundred. Yes, I will mark this place. I can't just mark somewhere I'm not sure of. Aren't you sure of it though? So first, let's do five point oh five by five point oh five. No, do not mark this place. Okay, let's mark this one. So there's there is a coordinate there. That was the first one used. Symbol two. Point zero three by one point oh four. Probably that. I want to go up. Okay. 3.03. Yes, this is correct. Oh, we're marking it with the actual symbols that were seen on the thing, aren't we? 7.06 by 0 0.08. How's that? Good. I'll mark that. And then there's one left. He hasn't said anything yet about any of these. 9.04 by 2.04. That looks like 9.04. And that looks like 2.04. Yep, there it is. I've marked all the places in Wellsmouth. Map it out. Solve the machine puzzle. Oh wait, what does that get me? New map? Right click to examine it. Oh, there was words on here that I couldn't see. Wait, is this all I need? Can I like go places now? Wolf spray. Never heard of it. Oh boy. This is where Ivar's cabin is. I have no idea about the other places. The map has no signs or markings on it. Well, it does, it has a couple. Red Town. I have never heard this name before. We'll spray Red Town. And then Whalston? Holstone. I have no idea where it can be. Timbervar. Never heard of it. He doesn't he doesn't make a clue of that one. Interesting. Alright, well before we leave and maybe try to go to one of these places, can I use that other map I found? No, I, I totally cannot interact with this anymore. Well, I hope I didn't miss out on a sequence. I was kind of excited by the idea of... Oh, that's right. That's not the door I want to use. I was kind of excited by the idea of a, a sequence that was totally optional. So now can I enshmestigate these places? No, they haven't been added to the map yet. Let's stand out here in the wind and just 
See if I can piece these together. Probably the old name of a place, but where? What if I have to combine this map in my inventory with the places I just found? And, like, apply them to it? No, it doesn't make sense. The brutal progression of Darkness Within strikes again. Oh, this is like a very large map, isn't it? It's got some weird shit on the back, too. It's a little different. Is it possible? Is it possible that that key we got to the room in Loth Nolder's house... Could that actually open more than one door? Because I know that there were a couple that were locked. Like, say, this one? It does! The key that I found in the cabin opens this door. It's like a master key. This place isn't marked as a secret. What the hell is that? I don't want to look at that. That's a that's a very eyes wide shut painting. I do not like. Yeah, I've noticed that this game this game tends to remove keys from your inventory when they are no longer used to open anything else. And for that reason, I'm also suspicious that I still have the key ring that uh, Gerald gave me. Okay, we got a lot of exploring to do now at Clark's house. Looks like there's a document on the table. It's a newspaper clipping. Gunshots in the Northwood Forest. Two days ago, at about 2.45 a.m., a forester named Herman Greel, 59 years old, reported that he heard some cries and gunshots which came from the depths of the Northwood Forest. Herman said that he was surprised because the gunshots sounded like they came from older model rifles. Okay. Alright, that's kind of a that's kind of a cheap way of writing, but uh yeah, those that would be the cult activity then with the rifles we saw in the basement. He added that no hunting takes place in that area, and even if it did, those sounds were too violent and rapid to be from hunting. They sounded more like an armed conflict. Well, who would have been shooting at who? Local police could not find anything during their invest examinations. Uh oh. Oh no, I know what this means. The coming eclipse. Shortly, there will be an eclipse of the sun. We see the reflections of this event on television and in newspapers and magazines every day. But I don't want to talk about the scientific nature of this event here. I want to deal with the ridiculous claims of some esoteric groups who are keeping the press busy lately. A lot of esoteric groups are starting to worship the coming eclipse as a sign from their unmentionable god. Who's, what, what newspaper is this? Who's coming some of them have started to prophesy together with other esoteric ideas and with secret meetings. It seems that the authorities do not take the situation seriously. However, it is obvious that these people have psychological problems and they are in need of immediate medical care. The situation is becoming more and more serious and worrying, and I hope that the darkness that these people sink into will last only as short a time as the darkness that will be created by the coming eclipse. Kind of some faux journalism here. We'll scan it. Nothing. Okay. Armed conflict in the Northwood Forest. All that remains here are some pieces of burnt paper and something plastic that has melted. Something was thrown into the fire. It's a receipt for a place called Zeke's. Where does this door lead? This is uh, a pretty shambled room. That's unsettling. It's another one of those wooden things that the Harmal uh, Versailles is kept in. I can't open it, it's stuck. Does this? The metal pins. The metal pins! Okay, hold up. Here we have a puzzle. What are we gonna do? I mean, I, I doubt that it's just gonna be equilateral like that. Maybe there's a clue in this room that'll tell me how to open it. No, this is the only thing in this room. 
I'm worried that, like, I need to be inspecting every painting in the game because I skipped over some of them. Imagine if there's, like, one that's got a really important clue on it or something. This would take forever if I actually want to guess it. I, th I just guessed it. <laughs> I think the mechanism holding the cover is is uh, just... I, I didn't even read what it said, but okay, we opened it. Good job. Good job, me. Oh, okay, we, we heard about this. Um, first, the green thing. A leaf that I found in the wooden sculpture. I can't tell what kind of tree it came from. Yeah, and then it's a bug with no, with no eyes, right? Dead bug with no eyes. I wonder how I was supposed to figure that out. I hope I haven't soft-locked myself because of that. Okay. Now, pray tell, what happens if I combine the leaf and the bug in my inventory? Ta-da! Nothing. Okay, this hardly helps me. Shit! Bad thing are happening. I don't feel so well. What is happening to me? Oh, buddy, this happens every time you come to Clark's house. Cutscene. Fuck. Fuck, no, no, I'm not ready. Do not fall asleep here. I command you to not fall asleep here, Howard. Get this man a Narcan hit. Okay, what is this? Dream number five we're on now? Am I in my apartment? Am I in that room from the beginning of the game? Where is this? Here again? Well, oh shit, I wanted to go back and explore! It won't let me. Oh, well that door does. There are some sounds issuing behind this door. Uh, that door looks particularly fucked up. We'll avoid that one for now. This is an attic. What a beautiful room. Reminds me of somewhere. <laughs> I remember what was on the floor last time this happened. Huh, but there's nothing this time. What does he mean by... Nothing out there, just clouds. What's this? It's locked. Oh hey, a simple puzzle. Love me one of these simple kinds of puzzles. Is there a strategy to this? There's totally a strategy to this, and I'm just having too much of a good time messing with it all sloppily. Oh, so close. There it goes. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, solve the ring puzzle in the well. Now it opens. It's a dream catcher. Is this my dream catcher? That's right, he does keep one in his room. Oh my god, I haven't been looking at it, but I bet that dream catcher has been, like, getting bigger throughout the game. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Like, there's another beat in them after you have a dream? I don't know. Well, we'll check out this room now. Uh huh. That black vortex devouring this place piece by piece. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, there was a different door. Wasn't there? I guess it's just this door. Uh, have a dream catcher. Okay, now where am I gonna wake up? Um! What's happening? No, 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 no. I was just out doing shit. That man, who was he? We were just hauling a dead body somewhere. What the fuck? I feel awful. How long have I been sleeping? But after all these things, I'm afraid to look at the clock. That's right, we can check the date. No, not again. It's been four days. I've been asleep for four days. So it's November? It's the 17th of November? Hang on. Hold the phone. That one guy says he was going to come back soon, right? No, wait, that's the Edwin Pickman quatrain. Oh, man. Oh, shit's gonna pop off. This is probably... I get the feeling this is like the last day of the game. Day 5, time lost, November 17th, yeah. Okay. Is there gonna be some kind of prompt? I... I'm not really sure what to do at this point in the game. So I'm hoping that, like... Is there another note in the basket? <gasps> what is this stuff? Who prepared this in my bathroom? Mortar and pestle, green liquid? A pot containing an unknown substance is not mine. I don't know who put it there. Where's the bug? Where's the bug in the green shit? We made it. It's the bug in the green shit combined, isn't it? Well, well what happens if we just... What happens if we just take a sip? Pot containing unknown substance, I don't know. Well, I need to get rid of this thing immediately. You're going to flush it down the toilet? That's such a waste. Who knows what this could be? We should send it to the lab. Clearly, you made this in your sleep. Now that the pot and the green thing are gone. Chill out, Howard. You've never made a mocktail in your sleep before? Well, we dumped the green shit down the toilet and uh, uncovered a lot of lore today. And we're left with a cipher, uh, a map that we haven't used yet, and three location names. So I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Your hints are always welcome, and I promise that there will be retribution for the few spoilers I have had to get in this game. Otherwise, I have to go get to my 6pm class. Take care. And don't forget to vote for Holt!